Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charters here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis. Now the S&P 500 gapped up and recaptured that 200 week moving average. Keep in mind, the 200 week moving average is based on the weekly chart. So, uh, you know, th so, so the bears, they got some time to push the price back down below it because Friday is when it matters the most as far as the weekly chart is concerned. Okay, it doesn't mean they will push it back down, but there's a possibility. Okay, that for the next we still got about four trading days left in a week. Anything can happen, and we need to be nimble and ready for the future. Okay, can't break predict the future, but we can prepare for it. Okay. So to this morning, my plan was to be uh bullish, okay, for the day, all right, because I am a day trader. I wrote here pretty bullish, uh pretty bullish pre-market and clearing 363 now that's when we gapped up from yeah you can see in this image right here we gapped up all right start started basing around that june low okay but if 363 holds that market opens it is then first support okay i'm talking about if it clears it and if it holds that market open it is then first support and bear case will not be in play unless the bears can take out that support putting lower targets in play okay but as long as 363 holds i have upper targets 364.5 to 365 zone 366 and 367.85 okay guys i'm not sharing this to add just to advertise my discord okay i'm sharing this for educational purposes because i want you guys to see how uncle child is trade what my plan is and all that happy stuff okay so my plan today was to be bullish if it can hold that 363 level you can see here on the 15 minute chart which is the the, the time frame i use to execute, execute my, my my day trades, okay? All my levels are based on the daily and weekly chart, but I use a small time frame to execute them. And as you can see here, at the 9.30 candle, this is after we gapped up, recapped to the 200-week moving average, cleared the June low in pre-market, all right? I do take the context of the price action in pre-market, okay? I take that into account, okay? So, what's my strategy every day that i mentioned to you guys i long breakouts of resistance i short breakdowns of support i watch for false breakouts and i watch for false breakdowns and i play those setups as well okay but we did clear that 364 365 target at open right and it led to a very nice move took out 366 and it hit my 367.85 target okay that's the 23.6 retracement level from august high down uh to, to um October 13th low right here, as you guys can see, okay? That's where I got my FIB levels from, 23.6 tracing level at 360, uh, 367.85. We pretty much, as you can see here, spent the whole day basing just under resistance, all right? That, guys, is not bearish price action, all right? When you see the price action basing just below resistance, that tells me around that resistance level, all right, there is still a good amount a good amount of supplies there. There's a supply level, good amount of supplies there that the market needs to burn through, okay? And they pretty much spent the whole day burning through it, all right? You guys know, after the trend days, come the chop phase. It happens, and chop phase are necessary for the market to help the market cool down and build strength for the next move, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to go up. We got to know the triggers. We got to know the levels and allow the price action to communicate with us. We got to listen to the price action. So what I'm saying is, even though we got this chop, I didn't see any strong rejections from that 367.85 level. All right? So that tells me if the, if the price action is continuing to base like this, just under resistance, it's eventually going to break out and head to upper targets but we still need that confirmation we need 367.85 to clear okay that's there it is 367.85 23.6 tracing level if we can clear that that would also be a breakout of this baby blue trend line that i got here i got a lot of touches on that trend line guys it's very well respected starting from august 16th got a test on august 18th got a test on september 9th got a test on October 6th, got a test on October 14th. So that trend line is significant. If we can clear 367.85, that also clears that trend line. And guess what? 
Uncle Chartis will be looking for calls. I tell you guys, even though we are in a bear market, I'm just going to play it unbiasedly. So above 367.85, I'll look for calls. My target would be the 371 level. 371 is the multi-year trend line. It slopes up every single day, so the resistant level gets a little higher each day, okay? So above 367.85, that puts 371 in play. Above 371, I would be bullish. Recapture of a very critical level, and it will put 374.5 in play. All right, that's this trend line right here. I got it from connected from July 27th low. Got a couple bounces here, September 16th and September 20th. We see we got some rejection here on October 4th. So this trend line right here, I'll make it a little thicker, is significant as well. That's at... Uh, 374 is 374.5 we clear that that would be bullish and I would favor 380 okay that's a 38.2 retracement level all right very critical level there all right and above 380 what else do I got I got this other trend line right here at 382.6 just starting from August 16th connect to uh, September 12th high okay so it's technically that that trend line only has two touches I know some of you guys don't like it when I do trend lines with two touches, but it's definitely something that I'm watching out for, okay? So, bulls, you guys can get some relief rally going, but the first thing that must happen is the clearing of the 367.85 level. You got to recapture that level, okay? However, if you guys cannot clear that level, my next level is at 366 and then that 364.5 uh, to 365 level. If those fail, guess what? June low is back in play around 362 to 363. If that fails, that will put 360 to 359-ish back in play. Okay, I give it a zone. That's around the 200-week moving average and below that is 357 where we got the nice bounce from last Friday. Okay, well, we gapped up from there from last Friday. Not actually a bounce, but we gapped up from there. Okay, we hit 357, we can fill the gap. Okay, doesn't mean we have to fill the gap right away. Okay, the market maker is going to do what they want to do. So, above 367.85, look for calls. I'd be bullish. All right, and if we start breaking down supports, look for puts. That's how I'm choosing to play up. Uh, that's how I plan to trade it. Okay, you guys don't have to copy me. It's up to you guys what you want to do. All right, so another thing, another level or something that I want you guys to watch out for. I'm going to take out all my trend lines here, and I'm going to bring up the 20-day moving average as well as, you know, I got some Bollinger, Bear, Bollinger Bears. You guys see the Bollinger Bears starting to squeeze a little bit, okay? Starting to squeeze a little bit. We could be entering a chop phase. I don't know how long the chop phase we're entering. That's just a guess. But the reason why I bring this up is because of that 20 day moving average the 20 dma day moving average and you can see it's been significant since august guys since august we can you know false breakout false breakout rejection we also had a rejection of it last friday okay we are right we close right there right at that 20 day moving average okay right there so 20 day moving average is currently at 367.2 ish as I told you guys, I got a level of 367.85 and the 20-day moving average at 367.2-ish. So, like I said, we can clear those levels. That would be bullish. And I want you to especially watch that 20-day moving average because you guys can see how significant it is. It's been very hard to be bullish when it can't even clear and show us follow-through of that 20-day moving average. All right? As long as below, I'm still bear biased. And even if it clears, I'm still overall bear bias, but I will still trade it level to level unbiasedly. So if we can clear our critical resistance level, Uncle is looking for bullish plays. Okay, why? Because the price action is acting bullish. If the price action act bears take out some support level, then I will look to short. Okay, the price action is Uncle Chartis' boss. That's what tells me what to do. That's what I follow. Okay, guys, up to you guys what you want to do. But that's my plan, and you know, definitely good luck for tomorrow, all right? Now we're going to move on to Triple Q. Triple Q, today closed at 269.35. Keep in mind, the June low uh, had a low of 269.28. So technically speaking, Triple Q did recapture the June low. That's bullish, okay? So if we can hold that, 
269.2 is lowest. That keeps upper targets in play, okay? I got a level around 273. That's a 23.6 retracement level, guys. From August high down to October 13th low, okay? Right there. So we clear that. We can hold this support at 269.2-ish. We clear 273. That'll be bullish and put up upper targets and play 277.5. As you guys can see, I got this channel, down channel right here. Down channel, blue lines. See if SPY can touch the top of that channel, 277.5. If you guys looking to short direct, try it there. But if it clears, you guys definitely got to cut your loss. Risk management is important, okay? So we cleared 269.2. If it drops below 269.2, today was a false breakout, okay? Downside targets I got at 266.5, 264, 262, and more lower targets around 259-ish. And if that failed 256.5, then a big drop down to 251. Okay, guys, Tesla got an inside day candle on Tesla right there. Keep in mind, earnings is coming up very soon in two days, so be careful. However, it did clear a bunch of resistance levels. It recaptured these levels. So 218.5 will be for support. That's the level it recaptured today. That's a critical level. If it fails, today was a false breakout. But as long as 218.5 holds, all right, got the next support around 222-ish, and the critical one at 225, if that can clear, that'll give us more upside to 230-ish, and possibly up to 236-ish, okay, guys? But if it dropped below, back below 218.5, false breakout. And this with the option flow, you guys can see here, SPY filter for 500K premiums or above. Wow, 50% in the calls, 50% in the puts, and I'm looking at these contracts, nothing is sticking out to me, but one thing I can say, not very bearish today. Might be a good sign. Triple Q. Wow, Triple Q is actually different from SPY. 90% in the puts, 10% in the calls. But I'm not seeing any of these contracts with big size orders, though. But they are, you know, we do got some sweeps. Still premiums pretty high. Uh, Tesla. 47% in the calls, 53% for Tesla. Not seeing nothing that pokes out to me. Nothing very significant. All right? But... Overall bears on Tesla, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.